Hey guys, so it's one very foggy day and um, yeah, we're going to do something definitely different. I'm in a vineyard in Germany, so let's have a look around. When the grapes are ripe on the vine, Andy drives a harvester which straddles the line and shakes the grapes. The grapes fall on, down onto a little mat and then get taken up into a conveyor belt and boxed behind the machine. Hey Andy, say hello. Hello, my name is Andreas Hoto. So these are the vines that the grapes grow on. You can see they're all in lovely rows and they're all in trellises as well to keep them all growing upright. They have to be in rows, otherwise the machinery wouldn't be able to drive up and down and they do get sprayed quite a lot to keep the mildew off them. So we're just gonna have a little walk around just while we're waiting for the fog to lift. And this whole countryside is absolutely beautiful. The whole place is just vines everywhere. So here we have some grapes being left for ice wine, which will be harvested after minus seven degrees. We also visit the local co-op, which specializes in wine equipment. It reminded me a lot of the TV series Breaking Bad, with all the different gauges and test equipment. Whatever, so that what's left will be better. Wow. Look at that far hill. That, that, that's what they, they drive off that. Okay, so we're about to just sneak up here and uh, sample some grapes. <laughs> That's some slope to go up. You see all the grapes there behind me. Um, some of them have gone a little bit rotten, so apparently there's this fly. And like fruit flies that like to land on dead stuff, these ones like to live, land on living stuff and they produce maggots. And then the maggots unfortunately eat the grape. And I don't think there's any cure for it, so... Of course these ones here are lost. Okay, what do we have here? Yeah, these these uh, grapes look like they've been infested by... Look, that's the little fly, the little fruit fly. The little, it's, it's crawling in there. Yeah. This soggy kind of, you know, messy looking grape has been infested with the fly and the maggots kind of live inside and eat the grape out. Th that that grape is healthy in that people. Mm. Look, the flies are all over the place. They're flying around. See there, those. Look at that. Look at all that there. Oh yeah. See that there? Yeah. yeah all look at them. Yeah. Swarms oh, sure. of them. Swarms of them. And the maggots crawl out. And puke, basically, puke all puke these grapes now are just discarded. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think. Look, it looks like the, the, they've just abandoned that crop and they're not harvesting it. Loads of grapes. It's not worth. You could go through picking off the bad berries. Look, yeah. Imagine all that tedious work. Poking out the bad berries with your little seconder, and it's just not your, worth it. No, no. There's easier crops just to harvest that are just good. Hmm? There's easier har crops just to harvest in one go, is it? Yes, of course. Yeah. That you don't have to pick the, pick the bad you ones out. You can do a certain amount of picking out, but when it's that much, it's just impossible. Every bunch has all these bad berries in them that you have to pick out. Oh, oh yeah, you can see them falling oh. apart in your hand. Look at that, and they go vinegary. Then look at the mag. See the maggot inside there. Oh yeah. See that. There, little maggot from the fruit fly. Yeah. Can you? Is that folks? Yeah. 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 Look at that. Disaster. Terrible thing. So unfortunately, these are just not going to be harvested. But there was a fantastic yield on them. You can see how much grapes the the vines produced. So this is the height we're at, and apparently people drive tractors up and down these plots. <laughs> David's saying it's 45 degrees here, and I'm not joking, it probably is, or fairly very close to it, because like, these poles are all upright. That's what it looks like. <laughs> and people drive tractors up and down, so what he said was, behind the, or in front of the, the back wheels of the tractor, they have these emergency bolts with like a, a shot of gunpowder and are like so they're anchors so if you start find that your tractor is suddenly rolling down you've no control over it it's an emergency to so use once and you literally just hit this big button and these two bolts will shoot down into the ground like an anchor and literally you just like a, a plow and just stick into the ground use once and you'll have to get your tractor towed out afterwards but um it's the only way of stopping you so you roll all the way down there there's a wall 
just down there and behind the wall there's another huge big drop so uh, your tractor is going down this way hits the wall you are doing do, do like somersaults then onto I think a train track or else a road down there so yeah this is absolutely mad and then same again behind all the shrubbery there there's more plots but as mud as mad as it is here some of the best wine is also produced here so that's why people are still growing grapes here and there's a bit of a castle off there in the background and more area than ready to be cultivated were built originally can you imagine clearing this land first to put vines oh yeah it's full of stones boulders rocks and they clear they build use the boulders for building the terraces they flatten out the things yeah. and and they use the stones to clear up the soil and build the walls right yeah so like all of this here is abandoned yeah it's just because it just takes so much effort to drive oh it's, it's the whole hand done isn't it of course yeah 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 but the other another thing that just occurred to me there now i just uh, forgot to mention yeah. to you do you know the mildews that um, the two grape mildews, yeah. powdery mildew, yeah. downy mildew? They they didn't exist in Europe a couple of hundred years ago. Oh yeah, they're not yeah. Native to Europe. They, they, sorry, no, they're not native to Europe. They came from the Americas, and this, the vine species in America have evolved with those fungi to become resistant and tolerant to them. But not the Europeans. The European vine yeah. is totally susceptible and. Um, plants when people started bringing stuff back from America to Europe in the 1700s, 1700s, 1800s, I don't know, the, the, the yeah. two different mildews came at different times to Europe and when they hit Europe, when the they were brought back, it was like a potato blight, yeah. they, they wiped out viticulture until uh, uh, um, until um, uh, a cure was found, yeah. you know, they the, the, the discovered that copper controls this disease and so for the other, so viticulture was, was virtually wiped out in a lot of Europe when these diseases came in and and when it eventually recovered years decades later they didn't go back to these slopes that were so they had become they became what um wild and abandoned because of viticulture having been abandoned in general yeah and then they just never went back to the difficult uneconomical sites again yeah you know, it's easier it just sense it's basically just once you can get onto flat land or or less severe slope like this it's just easier to work on yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can imagine, like, when it, when, when it collapsed due to the diseases, it just stopped. And, you know, people who used to be wine growers just did other things then, you know? They, that yeah. was it. And they never went back to cultivating these slopes again, you know? It didn't make sense. You have to clear them again from scrub and whatever, you know? So that was a factor as well as just the pure labour of it anyway. Hello, my name is Andreas Hoto, and I'm uh, one of the owners of this bio winery here. And uh, this evening we will go into the cellar and taste some wines, and I explain some things to Stephen, so he can tell from the things at home in Ireland. So, hello, I'm Christoph, and I'm the other owner of the winery Hoto in Aspersheim. Okay, what is this machine? This machine is a press. And what's it do? The press presses uh, grapes out and the, so the juice comes down there and we pump it out into the barrels. Okay, but what's inside the, this press itself? Like? There's a, a, how you call it, bulk or? or a, bladder, a, a, bladder, a bladder. A bladder inside and the bladder comes with pressure, with Pneumatic. air pressure, pneumatic, yeah. Yeah. against this uh, stainless Real. steel. Yeah. And then the juice comes here out through the holes and so you press out the grapes. Lovely. Yeah. It's a simple system. Yeah. Grapes go in here at the top, they get squeezed yeah. and it comes out as grape juice yeah. here at the bottom. Wow, so this is the distillery or the winery. Andy, what is this machine here we're looking at? This is a filter machine uh, to 
to, to clean the juice when it comes from the press because you have a lot of stuff inside and when you want to make a, a wine which is, smells well and, and tastes well you have to uh, um, put all the stuff out, you make, make it clear yeah, that you have a fermentation which is uh, clearly slowly and, and not, not so fast it's for the quality, it's a thing that you need for good quality wines. So basically you just want only liquid, you don't want any solids left behind. Like you don't want any solids coming into the vats, you just want only liquids, all right? Clear juice. Clear juice, yeah. yeah. After being filtered, the grape juice can be put into these vats where it can ferment and turn into wine. Now that the grape juice has turned into wine, impurities such as the yeast must be removed. And how do these machines then work? Now there is inside uh, some plates. Here we have uh, another filter. We uh, normally use it for wine filtration. And we have here uh, the stainless steel plates. And we use uh, the stuff is called Kieselkur. Yes. And we push it here with this uh, tank always into the line. And then the kieselkur settles on these plates and comes a cake. The cake becomes bigger and bigger and the wine goes through this cake and getting cleaned, getting out again. Yeah, so it has passed through the cake, then yeah. into these filters, yeah. and then it can go back down the line you know, and then be out. and out. Yes. And it's cleared. Perfect. Okay, now guys, you've seen how it's made. Now the best bit, the sampling. Okay, I'm here with the experts, so we're going to learn how to drink wine. Here's Andy taking a sample of this year's white wine, which is still fermenting and hasn't yet been filtered. Okay, so apparently when you're sampling, you're meant to spit it out, but uh, ain't nobody got time for that. When looking for aroma and a certain taste, these oak barrels can be used to give the wine a certain oak flavour. Okay, Christoph, so what is this machine we're looking at? It's like it's like in the toilet. The same the same system. Yes? Gas can go out, but nothing can go in. And it's fermenting and the CO2 has to go out. Yes. And this is wine again. This is wine again. Riesling. Lovely. <laughs> Perfect. The fast Irish. So this one is under pressure. Okay, the champagne. You can go. Whoa. Go. <laughs> this is the bottling plant where wine can be put into the bottles and be packed. So guys, thanks very much for watching. I have had the best crack. I have walked so many vineyards. I have seen so many vats. Um, a really big thank you to Andy and Christoph for hosting me, for showing me around, for answering all my annoying questions. I have had the best crack ever with them. The lads were absolutely brilliant. If you would like to sample some of their wine, their wine is top class. Link in the description down below. Also a huge thank you to David Llewellyn. David, brought me on this trip, he organized everything, his German to English is amazing, he translated loads of my annoying questions, and uh, without him I wouldn't have made it here. David also produces wine, he produces Irish wine, if you would like to sample some of David's wine, 
link also in the description below. It's full Irish wine. It's grown in Ireland, bottled in Ireland, and ready for sale. So if you do like wine, give it a go. It's there's a rosé, there's there's sparkling wine, and there's red wine. It's all good. And um, if you like my annoying videos, and you would like to subscribe, hit the subscribe button over there. Comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. Basically, lads, I have a whole like warehouse here full of wine there's vats ready to go i have an empty wine glass that's dying to be filled so i'm gonna see you later